1.4, linear equations and modeling. So here is, this is formal point slope form. Unfortunately, I can't, I can't have to go with this, even though it's not the way that I do point slope form. So I'm gonna stick with this just because it's the way that it's done on the assignment. Um, this is good if, if they've given us only two points to find the equation for, or if they've given us a point and the slope, which is why it's called point slope form. So why can we do it with two points? Because just like we saw in 1.3, if they give us two points, we should be able to find the slope and feel good about it, okay? So you can see with, with ordered pairs though, you have the x1 and y1, that represents the x value and y value of some ordered pair that they, they have to give us. Now if you're given two ordered pairs, you just have to choose one of them to use. So find the equation line passing through these two points, write the equation in point slope form and then slope intercept form. So real quick, we have a point slope form. So this is our, our point slope form, but the thing about this is they've only given us two points, not the slope. So it doesn't matter which point you choose to put into this, uh, uh, this form, but we still, need, we still do need the slope. So I'm going to find it with the slope formula. So remember, it kind of sets up like this. Corresponding values have to be directly above and below each other. And uh, I guess to help us see that, it's y values in the numerator, x values in the denominator. And that's for both ordered pairs. That's better. All right, so I'm just going to say the first one is our x1, y1. And uh, I, I see that y value there is negative two, so that goes in the numerator. The x value is four, so that goes directly into the denominator. Again, they have to be directly above, above and below. Now, of course, if you chose these to be the second one, you just put them over here. It's not going to make a difference for the slope because it's a straight line. So then we have the second uh, ordered pair. We have x2, y2, at least for me anyways. So I have a y value that's negative 38 and then an x value that is positive 8. Uh, so, let's see, I should have got my calculator out already, but I'm ready to put this one in. So n over d, I have negative 2 minus negative 38. I go to my denominator, I type in 4 minus 8, enter. Oh, it's negative 9. That seems pretty convenient. So my slope here is negative 9. And that's, that's the m in point slope form there. So I'm just going to say this m right here is negative 9. All right, now we'll fill in the rest of it, um, but we also have x1, y1. Uh, again, it doesn't matter which ordered pair you choose. Since I made it purple, even though it's listed here as x, x2, y2, I'm still going to just stick with the color on this one, okay? Not that it matters which one you choose, but uh, that would make... This x value, again, I'm looking at the x value in that ordered pair is 8. And then its corresponding y value is negative 38. So let's see the rest of it then. It would show y minus negative 38. And this would be equal to negative 9 times x minus 8. Um, I think this would work. But it's possible that on the assignment, it may want this simplified. So if you see minus a negative, just change it into a plus sign. I, I believe that would work also. I, I think both would work. I just can't confirm that the first one would. I'm pretty sure they would want the second one, but I think the first one would work. Now that is point slope form. So this would be a box that you've got to fill in on the assignment, all right? Now from here, we can use point slope form in order to create slope intercept form. So that's what we will do. We, it's going to require some principles of equality, though. But first, before we use principles of equality, hopefully we remember that if we see distribution in an equation like this, we should probably do it. So let's go and do that. This, this would be negative 9 times, I, I can show it as 1x. But I also don't want to because that would be our form, right? So negative 9 groups of 1x's would be negative 9x's. And then also negative 9 groups of negative 8's would be positive 72. So here, uh, yeah, let's, let's go and finish this one. It would still show as y plus 38 there. 
And that looks pretty good, but it's just not finished. So right here, we need a, we need a principle of equality because I don't want this plus 38 with my y. Um, just to show real quick down here, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So m is the slope and b is the y intercept, okay? Uh, so it needs to take on this form. Of course, m will represent some kind of number, and so, so will b. Uh, and we know m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. That's, that's useful for a graph, but when we're, when we're um, just trying to write it in this format without any graphs, yeah, we have some, some algebra to go through. So uh, let's continue then. This y plus 38, I, I got to get rid of that 38. And by get rid of, I mean zero out, right? So I'm going to subtract 38. Not just from one side, but from the other side as well, which allows me to drop just the y by itself because the 38 has zeroed out. My negative 9y, uh, sorry, my negative 9x has now dropped into negative 9x still because uh, I had to combine that negative 30 with its like term on the right, which is a constant. It's the constant 72. And while I should do this, I should be able to do this in my head. I can right now. Yeah, so I got, my calculator will tell, yes, thank you. The calculator tells me it is positive 34. Now, again, this, this now that I have this in slope intercept form, which is, it didn't exactly match with the way I, I had this here. It's, it's right there. <laughs> but um, if we were to graph this, we now have the y-intercept and the slope, boom. And you could graph it if you wanted to. But remember this, um, on the assignment, this will want both answers. It wants this one. And it wants this one. So I, I should make this point in the video as well. If you had used this ordered pair, you, you should get this same slope intercept form. This, even the point slope form will look different. Of course, you'd have the, the instead of this eight, you'd have negative two. And instead of this, I have that backwards. Instead of this eight, you'd have the four. And instead of the negative 38, you would have had negative two. So yeah, the main point here is, and, and we should get the same equation, right? Because the slope should definitely be the same. Slopes don't change between points because they're straight lines. And then the y-intercept, even no matter which ordered pair you use, it should be um, the same point that goes through the, y, the y-axis. So. All right, so if two lines are parallel, the slopes have to be this, exactly the same because slope tells us the steepness. And if they're parallel, the steepness has to be the same. It has to be the same. It's just their y-intercepts may be different. So to demonstrate this with my horrible drawings, and we'll pretend like that's a good drawn y-axis, and that would be a well-drawn x-axis. If we give ourselves two straight lines, which we're pretending that I'm still a good straight line drawer, like this one. So we're going to pretend like those have, of course, the exact same steepness. But, of course, you can see this y-intercept is different than this y-intercept, which if they are parallel, they should be. If for some reason the y-intercepts were the same, it would just be a line drawn on top of the other line. And you would have one line twice. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, which may happen. It may happen. Maybe not in this section, but it may happen. Uh, two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are opposite reciprocal. So uh, when it talks about opposites here, let's see if I can do this well. Uh, we're talking about signs. Of the of the slopes, okay, so that that's uh, that's positive or negative, okay. So if one if one is positive, the the other one that is, that corresponds with it has to be negative. If one is negative, the other one has to be positive. They have to be opposites. And then reciprocal means that the the slope, oh dang it, slope as a fraction. I feel bad typing in front of everyone because it shows how incompetent my typing is, but here we go. The slope as a fraction is uh, reciprocal just means it's flipped. Okay, so we'll do an example here. Let's say you had a slope of one half. Then its reciprocal would be two over one. Now, of course, you could write that as two, um, but and so this actually goes both ways. Okay, so if you had started with two, or you could make it two over one, and then reciprocate it into one half. I'm just showing reciprocals here. Not I'm not doing anything with the signs. Uh, perpendicularity, just in case you were interested, although I don't think you are, 
It, it, it just tells us that between the two lines, it creates a 90 degree angle. And I will not demonstrate that with my drawings because you can see how, I don't want to give you the wrong impression <laughs> of, of perpendicularity, not my horrible drawings. So if, if this was to demonstrate actual perpendicularity on these two, then uh, if the one half, let's say that it starts as a positive, then uh, again, we've reciprocated the fraction, but it also has to change the sign from positive to negative. Okay, so here's an equation. This one's in standard form, 2x plus 7y equals negative 20. It would be great if this was in slope-intercept form because we could find these slopes so easy and so fast. Unfortunately, it is not. So I'm going to change it into slope-intercept form so that I can find the slope. And to do that, we, that tells us, just again, to reiterate, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And since we're only focused on the slope for this problem, I don't even care about the b. I just want the slope. Now, a common mistake here is that students look at this and they say, well, the slope is the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is 2, so the slope is 2. No, you need to be careful about that because it is a common enough error that it breaks my heart to take points away. So um, we, we need to change it into this actual format, which it is not right now. So let's do one start. I would like to um, isolate the seven y's there with the principle of equality, so I will. And that, I'm going to do that by getting rid of the 2x, which means I'm going to zero it out. So I'm going to subtract 2x. I'll, I'll offset the minus 2x here on the right just a little bit. I'm doing that specifically to show that the negative 21 is not a like term with the negative 2x, so I cannot combine those two. So the 2x, original 2x, zeroes out. I now have 7y equals, and I'm, I'm going to change the order of these because you can. You can change the order of your terms. Just remember, do not combine them. So I now have a negative 2x and a minus 21, which would make it negative. The last thing here is we don't want the 7y's. As you can see, we just would like a y. There's a phantom 1 there. If you would like to show it, you can, but you don't have to. Uh, so right here, last principle of equality. Maybe I should have given myself more space. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of that 7 by making it a 1. So let's go ahead and divide it by itself. But if I do it there, I have to do it everywhere. Notice I'm showing the division differently. I hope that's okay because I'm, I'm doing that because I probably will take the fraction in slope-intercept form. So 7 divided by 7 is 1, and we could show the 1 there, but I'm not just because it, it looks prettier this way. And then we have the slope, which is negative 2 over 7. I can't see that that could be simplified, though you could check in your calculator, but I'm not going to. So negative 2 over 7, and then the y-intercept, negative 21 divided by 7, which would give us negative 3. So I'm just going to show it as minus 3. I did that y-intercept even though we don't need it for this. So it says a line parallel to the above line would have a slope of, well, we see the slope in that slope-intercept form as negative 2 over 7. It needs to match for a parallel line. For a perpendicular line, we need the slope to be the opposite reciprocal. Okay, so we're going to change the sign, and then we're going to flip it. All right, so if I have negative 2 sevenths, which I'm, this is not the answer. I'm just showing how to, how to do this here. So the actual slope, we're going to take the opposite. So instead of it being negative, I'm showing the positive sign, which you'd never want to do on the assignment. I'm showing it just so we know that we're, we are actually changing the sign. And then we flip the fraction. So instead of a 2 over 7, we now have 7 over 2. And at this point, because that's my answer, I'm going to get rid of that positive sign. This would be the slope there for the perpendicular, and then above the, uh, right there is the parallel line. Consider these two lines. Uh, we got two lines. Oh, this is great. No, it is not. I thought they were both in slope-intercept form, but they are not. They almost got me there, so don't let it get you either. I, I thought it was y equals mx plus b right there, but it's x equals something y plus something else, which we don't want. So it says the slope of line is something, and slope of line of 2 is something. The line 2 is great. 
But then it's going to ask on the assignment, uh, which of the following is true? And it's going to give you these options. It may even mix up these options. So it's not going to show these all in this order all the time. So line one could be parallel to line two. It could be perpendicular. It could be neither. Uh, but it has, if, it's, if it's parallel, of course, the slopes have to match. If it's perpendicular, the slopes are opposite reciprocals. And if it's neither of those two, then it, it's neither parallel or perpendicular. I'm going to start with line two just because I can see the slope is given right there, negative 5 sixths. So line two has a slope of negative 5 sixths. If, uh, if line one is parallel, it has to have the same slope, negative 5 sixths. If it's perpendicular, the slope is going to have to be 6 fifths. But I don't know what it's going to be, so let's find out. So I'm going to take that equation, x equals negative 1 fifth y, and then plus 6. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to do it this way, though, OK? So I'm going to isolate the y, which is kind of the method we've been using, by getting rid of the 6. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Um, again, I'm, I'm kind of offsetting the x and the minus 6 there because they're not like terms that we can combine. But I would show this as x minus 6 equals negative 1 fifth y. Okay, now the last thing I want is the negative 1 fifth coefficient of y to just be a 1 so that I can change it into a phantom 1. Uh, so to do that, usually I would divide both sides by negative 1 fifth. But that's going to make things, I think, a little bit worse. So what I'm going to do actually right here is I'm going to multiply that negative 1 fifth by negative 5. And for those of you that remember, it's, it's kind of like fraction multiplication here. I know my, my work is a little off right there, but it still works. But if I do it not just to that one term, I have to do it to all the terms. So even the negative 6, I have to multiply. I'm just going to show it as times negative 5, like this. So it is a little sloppy, but hopefully it works. Now I have negative 5x. Negative 6 times negative 5 would be positive 30. And then this would equal, and here's what happens with the negative 5. Well, the negative and a negative is positive, And then a 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I end up with just the 1, 1y. One now, of course, the format here is, again, slightly different. If you wanted to, you could actually flip that y and show it as y equals negative 5x plus 30, if it makes you feel better. But I can see here that the slope of line 1 is negative 5, which is not the reciprocal of negative 5 sixths. In fact, they have the same signs. Um, also, the, the slopes are not the same. So this one appears, this one just appears to be neither. So the format of the equations has changed. 3x minus 2y equals negative 9, and 6x minus 4y equals 0. We just need the slopes, but to find the slopes, we're going to have to change them into slope intercept form. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'll start with line 5 on this one. Um, what happened to lines 3 and 4? They'll be on the assignment. So we got 3x minus 2y, same process as we did on that last problem. Let's just isolate the y's for now. So I'm going to zero out that 3x, so minus 3x on both sides. Does zero that out, I can drop the negative 2y, which equals now negative, again, I'm, I'm switching the order because I can, negative 3x minus 9. Again, I'm taking control of the problem. And then the last thing is we're going to divide all the terms here by negative 2. Of course, it's only asking for the slope, but I'm going to include the y-intercept. So y equals negative 3 divided by negative 2 would be just 3 over 2. And then negative 9 divided by negative 2 would show us a positive 9 over 2. Again, we don't really need the y-intercept, but we see it. And now I can see the slope of line 1 is the coefficient of x, 3 over 2. Fair enough. Now let's go to line 6. So I'm try to fit it here, uh, 6x minus 4y equals 0. So the same process, though, 
let's get rid of that 6x by subtracting 6x from both sides. Um, I don't, actually don't have to worry about the zero in this at this point. Of course, I'll zero out the 6x minus 6x, but negative 4y here equals, I, I can show, <clears throat> excuse me, I can show zero minus 6x, but I don't need the zero there. So I'm just gonna actually just show the negative 6x. Again, you're welcome to show the zero, you just don't need to. And then last of all, I'm gonna divide both sides by negative four. So now I have the equation, y equals negative six divided by negative four would be three over two. And then we got the x. Uh, of course, once again, if you wanted to show the y-intercept here, it is a phantom plus zero. It was always there. You just couldn't see it, which is why we call it a phantom zero. And that kind of makes it a little creepy as well. But uh, here we can see that the, the slope of line two is three over two again. So now I see that the slopes match. Since the slopes are exactly the same, they're perfect matches. I see that line five is parallel to line six. Uh, we got to write two equations for this one equation, and that's okay. Uh, it's I believe on the assignment, some of the problems, they're going to start in slope-intercept form. This one, of course, I purposely not started in slope-intercept form because not all of them will. So it says write first the equation in slope-intercept form. Oh, no, I guess not this one, but we want one that's parallel and perpendicular, but it has to go th exactly through this point, which we'll show you how to do. First, we need to change that equation in the slope-intercept form. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move it, though over here so I can work with it. So let's go ahead and get to work. I'm going to get rid of that negative 5x by adding 5x's. That'll make it a zero. Just if I do it to one side, I gotta do it to the other side. So that will zero that out. I can now drop the negative 4y's, which equals, and I'm, I'm gonna keep this in slope intercept form order. So I got a 5x and then I got a positive 12. So that's where that plus sign comes from because the 12 is positive. If it were negative, I would show it as minus 12. Last thing here is I need to divide all the terms by the coefficient of y, which is negative four. So that is what I will do. And that will become, I'm, I'm showing the one there, but it's gonna become a phantom one. So y equals five divided by negative four is negative five fourths. And 12 divided by negative four is negative three. Again, we don't really care about the, the y-intercept here. All we care about for the equations of the parallel and perpendicular lines is the slope. So if I want the slope for the parallel line, the slope that is given is negative five-fourths. So its slope has to match exactly the same. This slope will be the same, negative five-fourths. The perpendicular line, though, I got to take that slope, negative five-fourths, and now I must change it into its opposite reciprocal. Wait. So I, I'm showing the original negative 5 fourths. Now I will opposite reciprocate it, right? Which sounds like you guys had figured out right there. I, I apologize if I messed that up. But yeah, this is going to be positive. And then I flip that fraction. Now it's 4 fifths. So this is the actual slope we're going to be using uh, you know what, I'm going, to use a, I'm going to use a different color just to kind of differentiate there. But this slope now is going to be 4 fifths. Okay, I, I'm doing that because I usually put the y-intercepts in purple. Okay, so we got to write the equations, though, in slope-intercept form. They've given us, a, well, I guess we find the slope ourselves. Uh, but we don't have the y, the, we do not have the y-intercept. Now, again, I do have other ways to do this, but... Unfortunately, I think they want us to use point slope form. So that's what we will do. So I'm going to set up point slope form for both. There we go. So we got, uh, we got point slope form, but we need slope intercept form. So that's what we will do. I'm going to start with the parallel line. Of course, we know the slope is negative 5 fourths. And we have the ordered pair, which was given. We have an x value that's 5 and a y value that is 1. So I'm going to replace the x with five and the y value with one. So now this shows as y minus one equals negative five fourths times x minus five. All we gotta do now is simplify this so that it, so that it matches uh, slope intercept form. 
So I'm going to distribute the negative 5 fourths here. So that's going to show negative 5 fourths x. And then uh, negative 5 fourths times negative 5 should be positive 25 fourths. So I'm going to keep the fraction there. Uh, then we still have the, we didn't do anything with the y minus 1. But we do, we knew, now we can work with that uh, minus 1 right there. So we will by adding 1 to both sides. Um, if you're worried about making those common denominators, don't. Just put that in the calculator, okay? That's going to give us 29 fourths there, which is positive. But this will, this will change it into slope intercept form. So y equals now, we zeroed that negative 1 out. I can drop by negative 5 fourths x. And that would just be plus the 29 fourths. This is the equation. I should probably box that in, right? This is the equation for our slope intercept form that is parallel. And it will also go through 5, 1. Now you could check, right? If, if 5, 1 is actually on this line, it should make this equation true. And if you replace this with neg uh, sorry, the 5 and then, then 1, you should get a true statement. Then let's go to the perpendicular line. Of course, the x, didn't mean to do that. The x and y values will stay the same, so my x value is still, I use the same colors, still 5, and the y value is still 1. And the slope, we've already found the slope, right? We found it to be 4 fifths. So just filling in the rest of this equation, y minus 1 equals positive 4 fifths times x minus 5. Okay, so it's, it's exactly the same process we just did on that last problem. I'm going to distribute the 4 fifths into the equation. So that'd be 4 fifths x. And then 4 fifths times that, I, I would show that as negative 5. That's going to give me negative 4, which again, you can put into the calculator if you need to. And that's not something you should ever feel ashamed about. But now I got y minus 1 equals 4 fifths x minus 4. Last thing we got to do, just like we did on that last problem, is just add 1 to both sides. So this one's not too bad because there's no fractions, but hopefully you're letting the calculator do all that work for you. So now y equals, we'll just drop the 4 fifths x. And then negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So we now have both. Yeah, parallel, perpendicular, and both these lines go through um, this point, 5, 1. Now, not, not that this is pertinent to the problem here, but this means if you graphed both these equations, I, I believe they intersect at 5, 1. That probably doesn't make a difference, though. A clothing business finds there is a linear relationship between the number of shirts N it can sell and the price P it can charge per shirt. In particular, historical data shows that 25,000 shirts can be sold at a price of 40 bucks, while 28,000 shirts can be sold at a price of 34 bucks. Give a linear equation in the form of P equals MN plus B, that gives the price they charge for N shirts. So I'm, I'm just going to relate this real quick to slope intercept form because that's what it is. It's just instead of Y, they're using P, and instead of X, they're using N. So the, the M is still the slope, and then the B is still the Y intercept. But they've given us different variables, right, like N and P. So this kind of goes back to independent and dependent variables. In this particular case, the, the price is going to depend on the number of shirts that they sell. Yeah, they're selling the shirts. So the price will depend on the number of shirts they can sell. Or maybe they can sell on the price P it can charge per shirt. Okay. Um, so yeah, we gotta we gotta make a an equation out of this. The problem is is this format is different, but they are giving us pretty much the same exact data right here. They're they're giving us two ordered pairs, and uh, the first one, we can see that it's twenty five thousand shirts for forty bucks. Now of course that's forty dollars each. Can be sold at a price. So, um, yeah, let's, let's write this ordered pair, right? So the shirts, 25,000 for 40 bucks. 
Okay, so that's one ordered pair. Maybe I should have used a different color. And then the second ordered pair was 28,000 shirts for $34. On this problem, they, they've actually told us that the price is the dependent variable because it's in the same position as Y would be in the formula for slope-intercept form. Yeah, yeah, so I just noticed it too, so. Um, so yeah, the price should be, the prices should be, the it should be the, it should be the output. Oh, okay. That's the Y, the Y is the output. The Y is the output? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. So we've got to find the equation. That's pretty much slope-intercept form right there. So we do need the slope. So uh, let's, let's go and find the slope. I know they're kind of big numbers, but we can still work with them, right? So here's my slope formula. And uh, I'll try to color code these correctly, but I got this would be y1 over x. I almost put x there in the numerator. Um, and then we got the other ordered pair, y2 and x. So we have the values there given to us. The first y value is 40. And then the first x value, 20, ah, crap. So I gotta write this kind of small, but 25,000. And then the second order pair, the y value is 34, and the x value is 28,000. So again, keep in mind, it doesn't matter which order you put these in, as long as corresponding values are above and below each other. Now as fun as calculating this by hand would be, I'm going to use my calculator. So n over d, 40 minus 34, all over 25,000 minus 28,000. Enter, and it's showing me a slope that is negative 1 over 50. I'll emphasize that negative 500, sorry. And don't make that mistake like I almost did. Make sure you double check your numbers there. But this is our slope. This is our slope right here. So now that we have the slope, um, and we don't have the y-intercept, which we could find all by itself, but we're going to use point-slope form. Okay, so again, y minus something, and my, uh, that's going to be the slope. So... We gotta subtract a y value. We, we already know the slope, and then we need the x value as well. Okay, so um, I guess I put these in green kind of inadvertently, but I will use the green ordered pairs because it doesn't matter which one you use. But I, I'm just trying, again, I'm sticking with the colors here, but the y value there is 34, and then the x value 28,000, and then yes, the slope we found ourselves is negative 1 over 500. So now we got this point slope. In my opinion, I think that makes it convenient, so I'm using 34 or 28,034, but some of you probably are using 25,040, and if you did, you should still get the same answer. And that's, I just take the pairs, I'm like, x1, y1. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the beauty of this is that you can choose whichever one you want. But the I just want to make sure you were switching it up again. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna need more space on that. Sorry, the writing is getting a little small, but here we go. Of course, right now I'm just looking to distribute the negative one over five hundred. So that's gonna be negative one over five hundred x. And I can't do that in my head. I think maybe some of you could, but I can't. So negative. Six. Better so. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, 56. Now that's positive, it sounds like, which it should be. Negative times a negative is positive. So positive 56. Goes pretty quick, but here we go. We got y minus 34 equals that. Uh, of course, one last thing to do here is to get rid of that negative 34 with the principles of equality. It's the addition principle of equality here to zero that out. So add 34. That's going to make that pretty, isn't it? So it's going to be y equals uh, the slope here, negative 1 over 500, which we expected it to be because we already found the slope. Uh, but 56 plus 34, I get 90. Yeah, positive 90, so it's a plus 90. 
And that there is the equation. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> I did it in y equals mx plus b form. Uh, be careful about that because up here they were like, hey, make sure you use p and n. All right, fair enough. So the y, of course, is the p. So I'm going to take that y and replace it with p. Is it weird that my um, junior high students laugh when I say we're going to replace y with p? And then, and uh, yeah, this is the one that we want. Okay, so let's try with the other ordered pair, right? We got the uh, 25,040. Of course, the slope here is negative 1 over 500. And I'll use orange so we don't get this color stuff mixed up. Oh, crap, it's kind of big. Um, so the y value is uh, 40. And then the x value, I should have given myself more space, but it's 25,000. Uh, okay, well, let's distribute that negative 1 over 500. So that, again, negative 1 over 500 x going to be plus because it's two negatives multiplied. Uh, yeah, plus 50. So now the new equation y minus 40 equals that stuff. And of course, just like the last one, the last thing we need to do here is um, we need to get rid of that 40. So add 40 to both sides. And we get y equals, we zero this part out just as planned. We have the slope negative 1 over 500 times the x, and 50 plus 40, still plus 90. Uh, so what this means as well is that if, what is n? That's the shirts, right? So the number of shirts, if you purchase, or does it sell? They're selling, if they, sell, if they sold zero shirts, it'd be $90 per shirt. Of course, that's, that's just, that would be the y-intercept. That doesn't really help us because if they sell zero shirts, it's like, well, that's zero, right? But this is the full equation. Last year, Toy Industries made a new toy. It cost $7,300 to develop and $40 to manufacture each toy. Write the equation for the total cost C to produce N of these toys. So it's, it is slope-intercept form, but again, instead of Y, they're using C. Instead of X, they're using N. So N is the number of toys, and C is the cost, which we would expect because the the cost, the total cost of producing these will depend on however many toys they produce. The good news here is that they have actually already given us all the information we need for this equation. We don't need point slope form. We do not need the, the slope formula. And here's why. The slope is given to us, if you see a rate like this one, $40 per toy, that is a rate. Usually the, usually, the rate is the slope. So in the M, that's my M right there. It's just $40. You can say 40 over 1, but it's 40. Um, um, okay, so the, the B is the y-intercept. It says it costs $73 to develop. That means before they ever start, C is the cost to produce. Uh, before they ever start producing these toys, there's that first initial cost of the 7,300 bucks. And so that, that ends up being our y-intercept on this one. That's correct, yep. So here, that is 7,300. I'm going to keep it in the format. I, I, in my mind, I really want to write y and x, but I'll, I'll stay with their format. So CNN, right? Here's, here's another reason why I know that the 7300 is, it's the y-intercept. It's because uh, they did not tell us how many toys were produced for, for the 7300 bucks. That's just the development, meaning they haven't, they haven't produced them, they haven't manufactured them, they've produced exactly zero toys, and it has costed them 7300 bucks. So that, as an ordered pair, would be zero, 7300, which would be our y-intercept. I... I can even, let me see if I can wear this even different, right? Not crack. So uh, let, let's say that they never, ever produce any toys. They've still put in that 7,300 bucks for just the development of the process. Uh, no, they didn't, they didn't produce anything. So again, that, I'm, that's just an emphasis on why it is the Y-intercept. So um, next up, it says, how much would it cost to produce 
2,300 toys. I'm going to need some space for that. So let's go back to our formula, right? We got uh, C equals 40N and then plus 7,300. Now this one, it's telling us that it's, it's for this number of toys. And we know that N, we could, if you need to go back, look at it, because that's what I'm doing. Uh, it said um, N is the number of toys. So number of toys, N, 2,300. So this is good because this will give us the cost directly. I can just plug this into the calculator. I actually do not need any principles of equality to solve this. I mean, not that it would be a problem, right? But uh, let's go to the calculator and see what it says. Hopefully you got the same thing here, but um, in dollars. I just put this directly into the calculator. It knows the order of operations. I got 99,300. So if they were to produce this many toys, 2,300 toys, it would cost this toy industries 99,300 bucks. And with $191,300, how many toys can be produced? Um, what we're looking at here is the cost, right? That's the C value. And so let's, let's go back to our equation. C equals 40N plus 7,300. Uh, but here, of course, the cost is now going to be, it's kind of big, one, 191,300 dollars. So yeah, we do need some principles of equality here. So I'm gonna have to first subtract 7,300 from both sides. And this allows us to drop the 40 in. That zeroes out as planned. 191,300 minus 7,300, just on the calculator there, uh, 184,000. Now, we can interpret this because it is a word problem. Uh, this means that just the manufacturing of the toys costed $184,000. Because the 191,300 included the the initial cost to develop the toys, and yeah, we're ready for the last step here to solve for n. I'll, I'll still show the work though. So divide by 40, divide by 40. Now, please, if if this were a test and I saw this on there, like I'd be super impressed with the work shown, um, but I still have to take a point off, and here's why. Oh. Yeah, you need to make sure that you, if it's a word problem like this, make sure you label your answers. I know that's kind of small, but it still works. Toys, right? So we do have the two answers. Uh, we found the cost for 2,300 toys, and now we know how many toys we can produce for $191,300.